Hi everyone, my name is Joey and I'm going to be showing you how to use Zoom breakout rooms. So breakout rooms allow students to work in smaller groups within your Zoom meeting. In this video, I'll cover how to enable the breakout room feature, uh, creating breakout rooms and assigning participants automatically, manually, and allowing participants to select their own breakout room. And lastly, we'll go over some uh, changing of options on Zoom. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how to enable the breakout room feature. So if you don't have the breakout room icon in your Zoom toolbar down here, this is what you'll need to do. Go to your Zoom preferences. On my Mac, this is located up in the top left-hand corner. Click on zoom.us, then select preferences. Then in the settings window, select general. Then in the bottom of the settings window, select view more settings. Close this window. From here, underneath meeting, select in meeting advanced. This will take you down the page where you will then turn on the breakout room feature by flipping this switch from left to right and the icon will go from gray to blue. So now let's get started creating our breakout rooms. It helps us think of this process in two main steps. The first step being creating our breakout rooms and the second step being opening our breakout rooms. So when we're creating the breakout rooms, this is being done in the background and doesn't affect what's happening in our main session room. Once we open the breakout rooms, however, this does affect what's happening in the main session room. Uh, you'll notice this because you'll see students will be leaving the main session as they join their breakout rooms. It should be noted that only the host will be able to see the breakout room icon here in the Zoom toolbar. And we can go ahead and click the breakout room icon and this little window will pop up. First off, we're going to create a breakout room by assigning participants automatically. We can start by selecting how many rooms we'd like to create to a maximum of 50 rooms. Now, based on the number of rooms you select and the number of people already present in your meeting, Zoom will tell you how many people will be in each breakout room down here at the bottom of the window. Now, CTL recommends having no less than three people in a room. The reason being in a room of two, if someone loses their connection or they need to leave for any reason, then that room is left with only one person all by their lonesome and you don't wanna do that to your students. Once you create the breakout room, you'll see this window which shows all the rooms and the participants in each room. This window also provides us with some additional options. Hovering over a room, we can rename that room, delete it, or reassign people to different rooms. And this option at the bottom of the window allows us to add more rooms. Once students have been assigned to a room, you can move them around by hovering over the participant and selecting either move to or exchange. At which point you would either move an individual to another room or you would exchange students between rooms. So we've completed the first step and created our breakout rooms. Now for the second step, we need to open our breakout rooms. Everyone you see in this window is still waiting to enter a room. So once we click open all rooms, we'll start to see everyone leave the main session. As a host, you'll be able to hop around from room to room. And if someone in a room needs assistance, they can use the chat function to request help from you, the host. That will appear as a little alert on your screen. You can then either choose to join the breakout room, which you can leave and return back to the main session, or you can address the call for assistance later. Now you'll have to keep an eye out for latecomers as they will not automatically be assigned to a breakout room. You will need to add them manually as they come in. And that is why CTL recommends not creating breakout rooms in the first five minutes of your class, just to accommodate for those latecomers. Uh, next up, let's take a look at how to create breakout rooms manually. So unlike when you create the rooms automatically, here we can see all the participants need to be assigned to a group. Waiting through the list of students can be pretty tedious, so we offer you this amazing tip. You're simply going to ask your students to number themselves off by adding a number to the beginning of their screen name. For example, in an English class, you might say, everyone working on Frankenstein, please add the number one to the beginning of your screen name. And everyone working on Kiss of the Fur Queen, could you please add the number two to the beginning of your screen name? Then when you go to assign your students to rooms, you'll see that they're all listed for you numerically, all grouped together, and you don't have to go searching through the pool of participants. The final option allows participants to choose which room they'd like to join. And this is pretty straightforward. Once participants have joined rooms, then they may choose to move from room to room if they like. 
Lastly, let's go over a few breakout room options. You can make announcements uh, to breakout rooms through the broadcast option. This can be useful in letting rooms know when breakout rooms are nearing an end. So for example, I might say, or type in one minute left and send that off. After making the broadcast, we can then close the rooms like so. Then each room sees a little timer icon which counts down from one minute. Participants then can either join the main session right away or they can wait until the timer runs out and they're automatically transferred back to the main session. And there are a few more options when we click this gear icon down in the bottom left-hand corner of the breakout room window. We can allow participants to choose their room, which would allow them to move freely from room to room. We can allow participants to return to the main session at any time. We can also automatically move all assigned participants into breakout rooms. This is useful because typically students still have to join the rooms which they are assigned to even after you've opened the breakout room. Selecting this option automatically pushes students into their assigned breakout room once you open all the rooms. We can set the breakout rooms to close after a certain amount of time. And if we like, we can also change the amount of time on the countdown timer here. We can also recreate rooms. So you bring everyone back to the main session. You can recreate the rooms here, open the rooms, and send everyone back out. So that's how you use Zoom breakout rooms. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.